Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. Let's go over the catalog settings. We mentioned that when we're going over preferences, there were also settings for each specific catalog. So you can get there by hitting Control Alt Comma, or we can also go through the Edit menu and just go to Catalog Settings as well. And that's Command Option Comma on a Mac. Let's start with the General, and we're just going to go through all three tabs. So the General tab basically gives us information on the actual catalog itself. It tells us the location of it. Uh, the file name, when it was created, and the size, and also when it was backed up and optimized. Now for this uh, catalog, I haven't backed it up or optimized it, um, so it's not going to give me dates on those. If you guys ever forget where you're storing a catalog, it's very useful just to go into the General tab and click Show, and it'll automatically bring it up in your Windows Explorer or in your Finder uh, browser window. So that's a really useful way to find your catalog quickly. Now, going back to the General tab, we have another option, which is the Backup. Um, this is going to give you options to on when it's going to remind you to back up the catalog. It won't do it automatically, but when you exit Lightroom, it will say, uh, you know, would you like to back up this catalog? And you can set this to never, once a month when exiting, uh, once a day when exiting, every time Lightroom exit, or when Lightroom next exits. So you can set it to be automatic if you like. Now, typically I'm not backing up my catalogs, and the reason why is because we have redundant backups already via hard drives. But uh, what this does is it only backs up the catalog file. That means that the images themselves, they are not backed up. Just the catalog file, which is storing the information on the images that you have in the catalog. So don't get this confused with you know, uh, any type of image backup. Now one thing to note is that this backup, you want it to be on a external hard drive or somewhere else other than the main drive where you're working. Because if you back up to the same drive and that drive goes out, when the, there's no really any point in backing it up. So make sure that if you do run the backup that you're running it to some external source that's not the same working drive that you're working on. Alright, let's go to the file handling tab. Now in the file handling tab the first options we have is for the preview cache. Now this is for standard size previews. It's going to ask you uh, what size do you want those standard size previews to be. Now I'm running on a very very fast machine so I typically will set this at the max of 2048 and it doesn't matter too much because most of the time I'm not rendering previews uh, until I'm ready to work and at that point I render full-size previews, one-to-one uh, -one quality previews. Now I'll teach you guys about that in a little bit but it kinda depends on your workflow as to what size you want to set here and it also depends on the speed of your computer. Um, if your computer is very fast you can get away with uh, 2048 pixels if it's not you probably want to bump it down to 1024 to save on processing power. Next thing we have is the preview quality. The preview quality is just going to determine the exact quality of the preview that is generating. Now usually I'll set this to high once again. This is going to depend on the speed of your computer. If you're running on a very new computer, lots of RAM, a great processor, put this to high. If you're not, it's going to slow down Lightroom significantly. So you want to put it on either medium or low. Next option we have is to automatically discard one-to-one -one previews. Uh, what this will do is one-to-one -one previews are, are full-size previews that are generated and stored in your Lightroom cache folder. It's what we were talking about when we were saying that before you start working, uh, it's good to generate one-to-one -one previews so that you're not waiting as you go from image to image for Lightroom to render those previews. So these one-to-one -one previews are pretty large. Like we mentioned, you might be setting your cache to, say, 50 gigabytes like us, which is a large amount. So you probably want to have it set to purge every now and then so you don't have to do it yourself. Now what I like to do is because most uh, items in our workflow are in and out of our workflow within one week, um, I like to have it after one week. But you can set it to after 30 days or you can set it to never, which means that you're going to need to do it on your own basically if you do want to clear it out. So I'm going to set this to after one week and then that's going to discard those previews, the one-to-ones after one week. Now these next two options for import sequence numbers, I just leave it default. Uh, import number is basically just going to set the default to what number uh, it's going to be set to when you start importing images, and one makes the most sense. You can also enter values for photos imported. I find it just easier just to leave this set to one and leave this set at zero uh, and just leave those defaulted. Let's go on to the metadata tab. Now in metadata we have several different options. When editing metadata, it's going to give us, uh, it, if we have this checked, it's going to offer suggestions from recently entered values, which is great because it's going to basically save time. It's going to do the autocorrect thing, or not autocorrect, but autofill thing, where it's kind of filling in as you're typing so that way you don't have to type in full words. It's nice to have selected just because it, it saves time. You can also, if, if your suggestions list gets too large or it has items that you don't want in there, you can clear it just by clicking here. Uh, we can also include develop settings in the metadata inside of JPEG, TIFFs, and PSD files. And what that means is 
all the information in your develop panel that you enter in on an image is going to be actually stored inside of a JPEG, TIFF, and PSD. Now, typically I will actually turn this off, and the reason being is that JPEGs and PSD files, well, JPEGs mainly are, are what clients get. Actually, we don't deliver anything but JPEGs to clients. And I don't necessarily want them to be able to have all the access to the develop information. It's just extra information, and uh, it has kind of like our, you know, our style as far as production goes. So I don't want to include those. So I will turn that off. This really isn't necessary unless you find yourself going back to JPEGs, TIFFs, and PSDs and wondering how that they were developed. But I don't find myself ever needing that function. So I'm just going to turn those off. Now this next option to automatically write changes into XMP is something that most people will never need. You want to make sure that if you don't need this, you turn it off because it is going to slow down Lightroom. Because what it's going to do is every develop setting change that you make, it's going to duplicate that change in a separate sidecar XMP file next to that image. So it's creating an extra file and also updating the settings of that file twice. Now the reason why you might want to use XMPs is because maybe you are editing in third-party applications. After you after you perform all the stuff in Lightroom, you want to take all of your raw files and actually put them into another third-party application, and you want to start from the point where you edited them in Lightroom. So doing saving these XMPs will give you a sidecar file to each raw, and so when you move it to another program, the changes that you make in Lightroom will actually be visible in those other programs. Now, it is not a backup to your catalog, and it's not something that's necessary if you are all using Lightroom. If you're transferring this to other computers using Lightroom, you just transfer the catalog. There's no need to transfer XMP files. Um, if you're giving it to a friend who uses Lightroom, again, you transfer the catalog along with the images and they have everything. This is not a, a good option. I know a lot of people select this because they think it's a backup to their, their image settings. It sort of is in a way, but you guys can create the same backup with your uh, just by backing up your catalog itself and it's not going to slow down the performance of Lightroom. So make sure you actually need XMP files before having this automatically write changes into XMP. We have a whole chapter dedicated to just understanding XMP files, so uh, be sure to check that out if you guys have any questions on this. Now our next two metadata options are reverse geocoding, which is new, of course, to Lightroom 4 since we have the map module now. And I would recommend that you have both of these selected. Uh, what this is going to do is basically allow Lightroom to guess uh, or provide address suggestions based on GPS coordinates. And it's, it's a fairly useful item to have selected so that it's actually filling in stuff for you. It's making those GPS coordinates more usable by providing kind of an address suggestion. Next thing is you want it to also export these suggestions whenever uh, address fields are left empty. That way, if you're not editing specific address metadata, then at least when you export it, it's going to provide somewhat of a useful address for whenever those fields are left empty. All right, now the last metadata option we have is for EXIF information if we want to write date or time changes into proprietary raw files. Now, if this is selected, what this basically means is that I'm going to close this. If I go to my metadata uh, drop down right here and I go to edit capture time, let's say the capture times on my images were not correct and I want to edit those because I forgot to set them in camera. If you have that option selected, I'm going to get back in, control alt comma to get back in. Um, if you have this option selected, then it's going to actually overwrite the date and time of uh, those changes into the raw files themselves. It's going to replace the time that was already in there. Now, if you're doing this kind of modification, it's okay to have that selected because you obviously know when you're editing those time changes, it's going to go in. But just know that this comes defaulted turned off, which means that when you edit those capture times, Lightroom will recognize that the capture times are different, but it doesn't overwrite the existing ones. If you do want it to overwrite existing ones, you need to have this selected, and then it's going to overwrite it into the raw files themselves. Now, typically, I do have this selected, and the reason why is because whenever I'm editing capture times, it's usually because those capture times are incorrect, and I want the time that's stored inside of the raw file to be changed as well. So it's fine to have it selected. If you guys don't want it to replace those uh, internal date and time files in the raw files, make sure you leave it defaulted as unchecked. Alright guys, we're done with our catalog settings and that wraps up our settings and preferences. Let's go on to the next tutorial.